This month, Intuit announced it is shutting down its popular personal finance app, Mint. This surprised a lot of users, angered a lot of users. So just what's going on here? Well, tonight we're going to take a look at it and suggest some alternatives for people who found that Mint isn't going to be around as they'd expected. Rich Brooks from Flight New Media is our tech guy, and he's with us here to talk about this. So let's start with just two basic questions. First of all, what is Mint for people who aren't familiar with it, and then what has happened here? Yeah, so uh, I'm a big Mint fan. I've been using it for years. Mint is a budgeting app, so it connects automatically to your accounts, like your bank account, your credit card account, your investments, pulls everything in, categorizes it for you, and just allows you to create budgets so you know how much you want to spend each month, say, on going out to restaurants or saving for college or your mortgage. And it was a free alternative to Quicken, also met, uh, owned by Intuit, which you mentioned. And so two years later, it became so popular, Intuit bought it. And I assume back in 2009, they'd immediately kill it, but they didn't. They let it run as a free alternative to their paid software for all these years until now, when all of a sudden they unceremoniously are killing it off. And uh, so that's where we are right now. And now people are scrambling, trying to find alternatives. And as we said, it is popular. It's got more than three and a half million users how are they reacting to this news? They hate it. Yeah, <laughs> they absolutely hate it. I mean, they have this software that's free, powerful, has helped them get all their budgets in order, and they're upset about that being taken away, but they're also upset about the fact that Intuit has only given them two months to find an alternative during the holiday season. So that might, there are rumors that might get pushed back, but right now, January 1st, Mint won't be in existence anymore. All right, so changes are coming. What should Mint users do? Well, Intuit has said that they can switch over for free to another one of their free products called Credit Karma. But since Credit Karma doesn't have any budgeting tools built into it, a lot of people feel that's a poor substitute. So my recommendation is that you could switch over to Credit Karma, but once you try it, you can't switch back. So I would recommend people not do that. I would recommend that people actually export all their data so they have a backup of it, and then they can see about importing that data into one of the alternative budgeting apps uh, from, their, from Mint. Obviously, Mint, not the only player in that field. There are other alternatives out there. Give us a quick rundown. Yeah, so I looked at a bunch, and they're both free and paid alternatives. And the important thing to note is none of them are exactly like Mint. So some have other strengths, some have different focuses, different weaknesses. Whichever one you end up choosing, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. But here are three of my, my favorites. One is called Empower. It used to be called Personal Capital. And a lot of people feel this is the most Mint-like of all of them. And also, it is free as well, so that's a nice feature imports all your accounts, takes all that information, helps you set up budgets. Some people complain online about the fact that you can't track non-cash assets, which means what's the value of your home, what's the value of your car. But other than that, people seem to like it. Another good alternative would be YNAB, or You Need a Budget. Uh, that's what it <laughs> formerly was called. And basically, this one has a different approach. It's more of like a financial coach for you, and it's purposefully focused on educating you and helping people get out of debt. That one is not free. It costs $100 a year. And the third option that I'll recommend or take a look at is um, called Simplify. And this is another Intuit product. So why they didn't recommend this one, I have no idea. But uh, this one is also Mint-like. You can set up budgets. You can import all your data. People complain that the shortcoming of this one is you can't track your multi-year expenses and your, uh, you can't also do any of the non-cash assets, like I mentioned before. It's not free but it's less than $3 a month. So if you can't afford it, you probably need a budgeting app, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all things considered, what do you recommend? Yeah, so what I recommend is that one size does not fit all. And you have to understand what are your goals. Are you saving for college or are you saving for retirement? Are you trying to get out of debt or are you looking to invest your money somewhere? Knowing that will help you go through the list. And if one of the three I mentioned isn't right for you, then I believe that we're putting a list of other alternative apps and recommendations on the 207 website so people can go there. So my final piece of advice is to do your homework, but to do it quickly because you only have until January 1st. Yeah, time is running out. All right, Rich, thank you. Excellent advice as always. My pleasure. And that list that Rich mentioned of uh, other places to go to get more information to inform yourself is indeed on our website. Head to the 207 section and stay with us because we're going to return right after this.